What's up everyone? We are all afraid of broken links, but how to find and pick them fast? What kind of redirect should you use for an old HTTP version of your website? How to find and gather all the pages that responded with 400 and 500 status codes in one report? Let me answer all these questions in this video. The easiest task ever is to check status code. Next step is to learn their classes and each code in particular. All in all, there are only five classes of codes and honestly, you need to remember only several of them without Google's help. Every time you click on the link or enter a URL into the address bar, you send a request to a server. It makes some black box magic to create an answer for you, where the first part isn't exactly an HTTP status code. First three digits and a phrase give a user, browser, crawler or search engine an understanding of server's reaction on a query to a specified URL. For example, 200 OK status code give us a clear understanding. Everything is OK, you're at the right place. As I mentioned before, all codes are divided into five classes and differ by the first digit. First 100 codes are informational, they are necessary for client and server during data transfer and analysis. Most of all, they are service codes, that's why they are regular for our eyes. Second 100 codes tell us about the successful query processing. Three at the beginning means a redirect from one URL to another. By the way, SEO newbies are mostly confused by the usage of redirects, that's why we will get back to this later in this video. 400 status codes tell us about the client-side error. The reason for an issue is briefly described right after the three digits. And the last one is 500 status codes. They are also an issue codes, but in this case it's about the server-side issues. The same as in previous class, the reason for an issue is briefly described right after the number. For example, it can tell us about a high load on server or other internal problems. There are several ways to check the status code. The first one is using developer tools in your browser. Use the network tab in it and see the status code of each document on the page. Then you have tons of extensions in your browser. Or also you can use online services or different SEO tools. But since I'm a NetPeak software employee, I will show you how to find that using Netpeak Spider as your own HTTP status code checker and even more. Follow these easy steps. Sign up, download Netpeak Launcher, install Netpeak Spider and run it. As soon as all four steps are completed, let's define your task. Is it checking status codes of all pages on your website or a bulk response codes check of the list of URLs? If you want to check status codes of all pages on your website, then in the main window of the program enter your website homepage URL and click on the start button. As soon as scrolling is complete, you will have all status codes in the corresponding table column. Pages with the 400 and 500 HTTP status codes will be gathered into the special issue reports. When you click on any issue in the sidebar, program forms the report only for pages with the current error. After that, you are able to see all pages that refer to these 400 and 500 pages. Replace these links with the working ones and to get rid of such nightmare as broken links on your website. To do so, call for context menu using right button click and choose incoming links. By the way, at the same time you can recrawl URLs or open URLs in external services, for example it can be Serpstat, Ahrefs or Google PageSpeed, but also you can try other reports in the context menu. If you have a task to make a bulk status code check of different websites, advertisements or just some specific pages, you can upload them to the program in three ways. First one is paste from clipboard, second one is uploading from a different documents of XL6, CSV, TXT or XML formats, or also you can download them from a sitemap. 
After that, click on Start and the tool will scan only this list of URLs. By the way, here is one more feature. If you need only status codes and nothing more, tick off all other parameters in the sidebar, but if you need more comprehensive report, choose necessary parameters and run the crawl. Let's talk about the most popular HTTP response codes to understand their purposes. And of course, we'll start from 200 OK, which tells you about the successfully completed request. It means that the page has been found and the information is sent to a client. 301 redirect, the requested document is moved permanently to another URL address. It's one of the most frequent topics to discuss among SEO beginners, but actually it's not so complex. If you always want to lead a visitor from one page to another, it should respond with this code. There may be duplicates, mirrors, deleted pages or other skeletons in your closet that you don't want to talk about. After crawling such pages, search engines eventually will merge them with target redirect URLs and pass the page weight. By the way, I advise you guys to keep your eye on your website and systematically crawl it. Because if you find links that lead to pages that respond with 301 code, better replace these links with the target redirect URLs. Thus, you will help search robots not to waste their time. 302. Found. This code tells you that the page has been found and is temporarily located in another place. Search engines usually do not delete them from the index as they may work again. Previously, this code was used in cases like website development or redesign or when the goods are out of stock but page still gets traffic, so it's reasonable to lead the visitors to another places like catalogs or similar pages. But now we have HTTP 1.1 protocol and 303 and 307 codes and the replacement of 302 found. Now we're in the second column of my table and we will start from the 303 code. The best case to use this code is when you want to lead the customer to a little bit different page, which may fulfill the search intent, but not completely. Only get method is available for this request. It means that you can only get the data from the server, but cannot change or update any resources on this specified URL. 304 is one of my favorite codes. At the first sight, it may look like a red rag, but in reality, it may, it may even give you more profit than 200 OK. We all know about the crawl budget. 304 status code is one of the ways how you can help search robots not to waste their time crawling the pages where you have made no changes. It's possible to configure this code together with if modified since HTTP header. I want to underline that the necessity of using this code for websites which consist of less than 10,000 pages is pretty small, but as soon as you work with quite big marketplaces, it's a must-have feature. 307. Temporary redirect. I advise you guys to use this redirect in cases when you temporarily need to lead a visitor from one page to another, but still need an opportunity to use a POST method in the request. It's a unique characteristic of 307 code, which allows you to send the data. Let's move to the codes which are responsible for the errors. 401. This code tells you that user hasn't passed an authentication yet or his credentials are wrong. 403. Have you ever seen an access denied message in movies like when hackers wanted to penetrate any system? It's pretty much the same. The server received the request but refused to complete it due to access limitations. For example, a user wanted to get a root folder, but it can be reached only by administrators. 404 not found. The requested address hasn't been found. It's a must-have code on your website for non-existent pages. Search engines can index a bunch of pages which do not exist in reality, causing a long-standing headache to get rid of them from SERP. By the way, everybody like creative 404s, so do not forget to add cat memes there. Only 4 codes left in this video and let's start from 410 gone. When somebody wants to reach an old deleted page, it's better to respond with 410 code. Of course, if you're sure that you will never have the similar one to redirect to. 
In this case, search robot may never come back again and mark this page as deleted one. Eventually, it will be gone from SERP. 429, too many requests. We see this code in our crawler every day. When server detects excessively high activity from one user per period of time, it responds with 429 code. If you want continue crawling of this website, I advise you setting less simultaneous threads or making longer delay between your requests. Hey you, respect your server. It's almost as busy as Google. Everybody asks about something. In the end, let's talk about the most common server-side error codes. 500. It may describe a lot of problems on your website. The reason of it, it's something unpredictable, it can't be easily detected, so it's not marked by any other exact code. 503. Service unavailable. It's like a vacation for your server. Usually you can see it during temporary maintenance or a high load. To sum up, let's briefly run through the, all the things I've told you today. First three digits and a short phrase in a service response are meant to provide a user, browser, crawler or search robot with an understanding of service reaction. All codes can be divided into five classes, which differ by the first digit. First hundred codes are informational. Second hundred codes tell you about the successfully completed requests. Third hundred codes are redirects. 400 codes are client-side errors, 500 codes are server-side issues. Of course, it's a lot of ways how you can check status code, but the best one is NetPeak Spider. So don't forget to sign up to get a free trial and of course, subscribe. Wish you a lot of traffic and a lot of good clients, guys. Bye-bye.